Hi, welcome back to Lisa Gollum Art Channel. This is my first outdoor tutorial of 2021. It's glorious. Um, it, the sun was out briefly, so I put on my sunglasses, but it's mostly cloudy, so I think I'll take them off. Um, so today I thought I'd paint some pretty spring cherry blossoms for you. And I will be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial. Haven't done one in a little while. Uh, I've been shifting my focus more to just spontaneous abstract instruction and things like that. But every once in a while, I want to do a step-by-step. -step. So hope you enjoy. Um, while I'm painting, you won't see me, you, but you will hear me. I will be in disembodied voice. Let's get started. Okay, so for the background, I'm going to let you do any color combo you want. My one word of advice is it needs to be a little subtle and not a lot of contrast. Otherwise it'll overwhelm your flowers later. So I recommend finding a color palette you like and kind of sticking to it more or less and similar tone. All right, so I'm just gonna use a palette knife just to get some colors on my palette. <laughs> That's why they call it a palette knife. So there is some of that. And here's some regular white. It just happens to be liquid white. Eh, it's not coming through there, but that's okay because I can just do this. That should be good. I'm using just a, a small 12 by 12 canvas. So and then of course I need the Payne's Gray. It's a very powerful pigment, so you don't need a ton, especially for the background because you don't want it very dark. It's not a nice blue. It's very, very pretty. You can kind of see it on the palette knife there. I'm sure this on the video just looks black. And because I want a hint of purples, sort of, and it'll be a muted purple because I'm using Payne's Gray instead of pure blue. So I'm gonna, I'm using a little quinacridone red by Golden. It just happens to be fluid. I don't have any of this in a tube. You can use the tube, that's fine too. So now I'm going to take my largest brush and I'm happy and for me it's going to be a filbert brush. You can use a flat brush as well but the main point being at least an inch wide so that you know you can cover the canvas fairly quickly. All right so I'm going to put that dip it in my water which I have over off to the side here because my table is small. And then I'm gonna dip the brush or just dab the brush on my napkin just so it's not very drippy. Now I'm gonna start by putting some of the pearl white or you can do pure white. And I'm gonna just kind of, you know, oh, it's so glorious, isn't it glorious? And I'm not, I'm, I'm wanting brush strokes to be left. I'm wanting it to be fun in the background of this painting. I'm gonna use a little pure white as well, just for fun. And you notice I'm, I'm even holding the brush in a very loose way. That's the hardest thing I believe to learn as an artist is to, to be loose and not, not try so hard to make it look like a photograph and to, to leave some brush marks because that just lends itself to be more interesting painting that way. And I'm kind of covering the canvas with this whitish color. That will prevent me from going too dark too quickly because I have a tendency to do that. At this point, if you want to, you can paint around the edges. I typically don't because for me, I prefer to have black or Payne's gray just solid on the edge because it looks a bit more like a frame. That's just a personal preference. You can do whichever way you like. Now, because I've gotten rid of a little few more brush strokes, I'm going to Put a few more brush strokes in here just intentionally for fun. Now, now I'm going to play. You notice how little bit of that Payne's Gray, not very much. And I'm just going to start smooshing it in to that. And I'm not going to put Payne's Gray everywhere. And then I'm going to start with a little bit of red, which is going to turn kind of purpley, which is my intention. I want a little 
little bit of pink up here, but not too much. There. Now, when I lay down a color in a background, I'm not looking for samey, samey, every color everywhere. Not really. Um, so you see it's a little more purpley pinkly down here and a little more bluey over here. I like that. I'm not going to change that. What I only thing I want to do is I might add a little bit more of that pearl, pearl white right back on the top. Just for more fun effects. Oh, it's just so pretty. Now, now's the fun part. We have to let that dry. Okay, so I gave my painting about six or seven minutes just to dry. It's completely dry. And here it is here. Oops. There we go. Completely dry. Doesn't take acrylic long, well, especially inside. And I actually put it in the sun, which came out again, which is nice. I like the sun. Here comes the sun. <laughs> All right, cheers. So to map out where I want my branches, I'm going to use a round number two brush. I'm going to dip it in the water first, drag it in the side of the water jug so that it's not dripping. And I have to decide what color to make my branches. Now, I don't love the look of just black branches and pink flowers. Um, but I don't really want the branches blue. So what we can do is we can mix blue and orange to get kind of a gray shade, but that's not like a, when you mix gray out of just black and white, it has a dead quality. When you mix a gray by combining complementary colors, which orange and blue are, then you get like a nicer gray. So sometimes it takes some finagling. So I'm gonna add some yellow to my palette, just a little bit because to make orange, I need the red and the yellow together. So I've got some blue, some yellow, and some red, and I'm just gonna mix them together and see what I get. That's kind of a nice brown. It's not pretty. So it's probably hard for you to see, but basically it's a nice sort of brownie shade. I might add the tiniest bit of white just so that it's not quite so dark. I don't want this painting to be very dark because it's spring and I want it to be lighthearted. Isn't that a beautiful brown? All that just by combining red, blue, and yellow. Now, if you're using a bright blue, it might not look quite the same shade. You can just play with it. You can always add a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of white, which is a grayish if you're struggling. Or if you really want to, feel free to buy a brown or a gray paint. Some people prefer to do that. I prefer to play and to try and mix them. There's lots of good tutorials on color mixing. Um, that's not what today is about. So I don't need a big trunk. I just need some little branches. And I'm just going to have fun with that. You notice um, with, bait, with this small brush, you do have to reload it fairly often. So I'm just kind of creating some interesting branches kind of coming up. And you can even have them kind of coming down a little bit. And of course, one branch comes out of another. So basically with branches, these don't have to be like perfect. Like if there's a little bit where it's kind of the paint's kind of skipping, that just lends to the painterly sort of vibe of a painting. But if you don't like it, you can always fill in those little sort of spotty areas by thickening that up a bit and, and putting a little more paint. When you have a layer of paint down, sometimes the next layer drags a bit and it's hard to apply. But that's kind of normal because the under painting is a little bit sticky still. But remember, now we're just looking for places where we can put some pretty flowers. And we want flowers sort of in different areas. So wherever a, a, a branch ends will be a flower. So that's a good indication of where you want your branches to go. If it's really spotty, I'm going to fill it in too. 
And always add more water, adding more water to your paint will also help it flow better. It thins it out a bit, makes it a bit more transparent, but I do not mind that at all. The thing I think about if there's a part of the background I really like, like I really like that light there, so I don't want a flower kind of right on top. So I'm going to make this branch a little longer so that the flower will be more over here because I really like that. That's really pretty. And remembering too that you can cross over. In fact, it looks a lot more realistic if you do make sure that some things cross over. And remembering too, you still have to reload your brush often. So where I put the ends of the branches, I am paying attention because I don't really want too many flowers on top of one another. So right here, they're kind of close together. So I might make this a little bit longer. Put it down a little bit. Now, I've also painted branches a lot, so don't fret. If your branches don't look quite as perfect, practice makes perfect always. All right. Painting should be fun. You know, Paul Barras always talked about happy little paintings and that paint art should be fun. And if it's not fun, then you shouldn't be doing it. It's all good. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to put less branches coming from this side because my tree is down here. So just maybe a few branches in this, this way. Make another V. This is like a, a couple fatter branches down here. But remember, every place you put a, a branch, you're going to have to put another flower. So if you don't want to have to work on a ton of flowers, do less, less little branches, but if you don't mind the flowers, you can do more. So, let's see, I'm gonna make another branch come out of this one and cross over here. I realize these flowers will be on top of each other, but I'm just going to deal with that. I'm not gonna worry about it. Because you know what, In a, a real tree wouldn't respect the branches of another tree. It, they really wouldn't. There would be crossovers. So because I want that um, loose feeling, I am actually going to take a small sort of pointy palette knife and sort of rough up some of those branches just a titch. Now I want to stick with the color scheme. So I'm just going to add a little extra blue to this brown and a little bit more white. One of the other things that really makes a painting cohesive is to use the same colors in the foreground as you do in the background to kind of marry the colors together. Sometimes I put the exact same color in every color mix that I use. So far, I've used Payne's Gray in every color. So that's kind of an example. So that's kind of making a little more blue so it makes it a little more gray. You know, if you can see that. 
But I'm just going to take that gray and just carefully sort of go on top of some of those branches. And again, you have to put paint on your palette knife quite a bit. Now, I'm not trying to be too careful again. That's hard for me, by the way. It's not an easy thing. But it's something that I'm committed to trying to do because I can get so tight so quickly with realism. And I do not want that today. And so you will find it's a little difficult to not get too straight aligns with your palette knife. So again, if you don't want to loosen up your painting, if you want it to just look a little bit more controlled, you can just stick with the brush. But I would take a second color, like a gray down, or just whatever color looks good in what you've got. Just so that it's not a one, um, one color. Now, if you get paint on the side of a little more than you're comfortable, you can always cover it with a little bit of background color if you want, but I'm going to worry about it. The ends don't worry, don't matter so much because your flower is going to go there anyway. You don't even have to do this with every single branch. I mean, I probably will, but you don't have to. It's your painting. You do whatever you desire and it'll work out. It's all good. You have to let go to paint well. You have to learn to let go. And that's why painting is so good for us because it's like, it's like learning a different way, a new way of being, like learning a way of just trusting and not, you know, stressing through life. I'm going to actually pick up my painting because what I find with a palette knife is it works better if I pull to the right, I'm right-handed. So it'll be a lot less of a stressor for me if I can do it working to the right. So that way I can move my painting depending on what, what direction I'm going with my knife. thing with this painting too is you can really put it in any orientation you want because it's all good. So for those hyper realistic people in the crowd, I do apologize if this is driving you your perfectionistic mind a little crazy because it's going kind of you know, not perfect. I ended up being another branch, which is fine. Or it might get covered up with flowers, which is also fine. This paint is getting quite dry, so I'm adding a little wet to it. So good to sing when you paint. <laughs> you often do. You can just also just do the larger um, pieces of branch, and you know, just not try and do the the smaller ends of the branch. I use knives a lot in painting, but I don't paint realistic a lot, so. Forgive me if this is looking a little too wonky for your taste, because I'm not the best realistic user for knives, but I do kind of like the loose, loose feel. Now I'm going to use the two inch round brush again with some white mixed in with that gray. Just kind of gives you light gray, and I'm just going to kind of do a few little highlights on these branches. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just like kind of running along. I'm not trying to be fussy again. Not in any place that you really don't love, you can do that. Cause now that like, just to make the branches a little lighter so they're not quite so dark. And again, I'm not trying to cover the entire branch. I'm just kind of accentuating 
and bringing some light because everything we do when we paint is about light and shadow. So if your painting doesn't have any light, it will be kind of dead looking. And we don't want dead looking paintings. We want alive, vibrant paintings. Paint is drying a little faster than it normally does here out here in the wild. So I'm struggling against my palette drying up a little bit. So I should spray water again, but I'm running low on the paint. So it's kind of not good to spray too much water. Keep adding more paint, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if these highlights are always the same color. It really doesn't. And that uh, Payne's Gray is a very strong pigment. You'll notice different colors of paint have different, you know, amounts of pigment. That's quite normal. And you just kind of get to learn that as you go. I do um, know that when I do tutorials without time lapse, I'm very aware that I chatter on incessantly. So feel free to mute me and put on some music if you if it's you know annoying to you. Now I need to do my painting so I can get out a little better on this side. As I told you before, it's kind of nice to sort of have it in a certain direction sometimes. I think I'm ending up liking that I sort of did a little bit with the palette knife even though I wasn't I wasn't finding it incredibly successful but you know you never figure things out unless you try and I am trying different ways of loosening up realistically just for fun because I can and that's actually the number one struggle with art uh, of, with many artists is a lot of times people can develop the skill to paint something that looks fairly real. But to make something that looks real but have an element of sort of artsiness and fantasy and uniqueness, that is far more difficult. This little guy I'm not liking, so I'm just going to smooth my with this. This color is also covering, the highlight cover will cover anything you don't love. And it kind of builds into the background a little more, so that's, that's really a really nice thing. It settles up these branches and just makes them sort of fade into the background a little bit nicer. And I'm liking that. Like in a paint and sip class, people would probably just paint black branches. And uh, that might be kind of cool, but it's really not very realistic or fun looking. I'm also using this to extend some of the branches, which is kind of fun. Yeah, so if it's not very real looking, if it's just pure black, but if you were going for really simple basic, you could do a pure black or a pure brown and you could literally buy whatever color you want to make the branches, whether it's paint, you know, um, raw umber or raw sienna or even like a gray of some sort. You could just buy the color you like and paint them that and then paint the flowers on. That's okay. If, if you're an absolute beginner, that would still turn out very stellar. But you'll notice with these branches, there, there are lots of different colors in those branches. And that's part of what makes it look interesting and fun. Me being a fuss pot, fuss pot here, I want a little bit more that of almost white. So this time I'm not mixing it with much at all. And I just want to, especially these ones in the middle, I kind of want to have just a fairly light, 
highlight again. If you're really new, stop it. If you're really new to painting, don't feel like you have to do every step. This is just kind of a guideline, but yeah, I need some punch in some of these branches. There we go. See how that, that white just kind of adds a bit more light. You can settle it up a bit with your finger too if you end up with too much white and you didn't want that. Just yeah, some of them just look, especially the ones in front, like some places where I've crossed branches over, the one in front needs to stand out a little bit more. And you'll notice the more shades of the color that you use, the more interesting and sort of fun the painting will look. And that's part of the hint. Nothing in nature is all just one shade of one color. Unless it's plastic and man-made. <laughs> The lighter I go, the more I'm liking these branches. I don't know, it's just, maybe it's just me. I'm really liking this, adding the light part. And it often is what makes or breaks a painting is adding highlights, for me anyway. Especially since acrylic paint dries darker than it is when it's wet. So one of the things that new painters often don't do is add enough highlights because The highlights is what really makes the painting great. Big branch there, really need a highlight, but I want this little twig to go to look like it's on top. So it's not like I'm painting distinct lines, like I'm not painting like a white line along the edge. I'm really not, because that would look kind of artificial and it would look cartoony. Because light tends to hit, especially something rough like a branch, it would hit it in different ways and it wouldn't necessarily just hit one side because there's all kinds of texture happening. So it, learning to be haphazard with your paint is one of the hardest things, I think. It's like decorating, which is kind of making it pleasing to the eye. I'm not trying to make a picture. If you wanted a picture, you could just take one, right? Mind you, I don't think cherry blossoms are out in bloom yet, but theoretically, if there were cherry blossoms in bloom, you could just go take a picture and hang it on your wall. Get it printed up real nice, put it in a nice frame, and if you want to do that, you're probably you're the kind of person that wants that. You're probably not here right now. Some of these on the ends, I'm just almost putting lots of white just to white them out just a little bit. But you get used to how to do that, that you're not totally obliterating, but you know, I've got very dry, just a tiny bit of paint on the end of my brush and I can almost just white out the ends of some of these a little bit, just to bring more subtlety. So since I'm self-taught, I'm probably not the best realistic teacher on the internet. I mean, I probably shouldn't tell you that because you're going to go searching elsewhere. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right with me. It's where, wherever you get the best learning. But some people have said they like my style and they like to, to understand that, you know, it's not always do it this way and that's the only way and that's the best way. And if you can't do it, you're screwed. That's not always the way painting is. And me being a flubber, bu flubber bucket, <laughs> is that a word? Flubber bucket? I don't know. But, but me being kind of a hit and miss sort of person, 
with my paintbrush kind of maybe comforts you. So, you know, I'm good for your self-esteem, apparently. <laughs> and then I'm going to make three shades of pink. So first, of course, for pink, I need some red. But I'm also going to put out a tiny bit of blue, which I also have here today. And I have some Indian yellow, and I won't need much of it. Now, you can use just a primary yellow if you'd rather. I just kind of wanted a little bit more of a orangey, but it's going to be very subtle, which you'll see in a minute. So you can take an entire course on color mixing. You're not going, this is not the purpose of today to teach you absolutely everything about mixing colors, but um, just very basic. Um, I need white, just in case I want pure white and not always the pearlescent white, especially when I'm making pink, I'll need a lot of white. There we go. Okay. So now let's first make a pink. So again, with the flowers, you want three different colors. So what I did was, to recap, that's just pink and white, or red and white, with a minuscule amount of red and lots of white. And this is a minuscule amount of blue, minuscule amount of red, lots of white. This is a minuscule amount of red, a minuscule amount of yellow, and lots of white. So you need a round-edged palette knife. So let's do the pink first. You just want to get the underside of the end of the brush loaded and you're going to push it on, push it on, push it on. I also have a smaller palette knife. I don't know if you have a small one. Um, if you don't, I recommend you use a brush because the larger palette knife is a little bit big, unless you have a really large canvas. But to take a small one, a little bit of paint, let's do one here. And then you can sort of push, push. And I'm gonna move my, my thing again. <laughs> I'm gonna move my canvas again, push. Sometimes when I paint, I don't talk well because when you paint, you get into your right brain. There, I like that better. It's, that one's got, just got too big. It's just too large a brush. So now it's just a matter of doing this method for a little while. And making the base color of some flowers, the pink, the base color of some, the coral, etc., just so that there's a little bit of variety. I know in nature they would probably all look the same, but this is my, this is my universe that I'm creating. So nature can do what it wants to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. But if you want them all to just be kind of the same, that is fine because it's your canvas and your painting. You can also, with the palette knife, kind of do a little loop-de-loo after the fact, once there's paint there. You can make it a little round, kind of by sketching in a little bit. I also didn't look to see how many petals this kind of flower typically has. So, you know, sue me again. I don't really care. If you're in the know of flowers and you do care, you make yours with the right number of petals. So I kind of like that effect, a little bit of texture happening there. So this takes a little bit of patience. Like typically 
The less you would move your palette knife, the better. Just kind of do a little circle and stop. So you're going to play with it. I got a sleeve that's, there we go. You're going to kind of just play with this and find your way with it. Have your way with your painting. And you can play with like how much paint texture you want to leave. A lighter touch will leave more texture. Uh, if you push too hard on the knife, you'll scrape all the paint off and you won't see much. But some people like that look as well. So that's with more scraping. It doesn't leave quite as thick of application. And make sure you don't make the flowers too huge, but you know, again, there really isn't a wrong way to do this. It's all about what you like. If you want big flowers, and, or if they are easier to paint, the larger that you paint them. I actually usually teach with 16 by 20 canvases because it's harder to paint smaller for many, many, many people. Put one of these up here. It is a bit annoying that you want the end of the knife to be the, the edge of the petal. So you have to keep turning your canvas to paint these flowers well. Otherwise, they're not in the right direction. Yeah. And I need some pink ones over here. This one's perfect because I'm running low on pink. So this one's, so I'm going to put a bigger one up here. It's for fun. Yep. Yep. Make sure that they're kind of centered above the branch that they're on. I'm going to put the pink one there too. So it's up to you if, you if you're doing like me and you're doing different colors, different root colors. I'm going to use all three colors on all the petals and all the flowers. But the color you lay down first versus second and third will make them just look a little bit unique and different from each other, which is fine. And good. Then you're going to load the bottom of the knife, just like before, but with the new fancy new color. And do some more flowers. So the more of these flowers you do, the easier it's going to get. turn for petal number two. <laughs> so I'm not turning my canvas constantly. this may give some of the flowers a really abstract look which I actually really love. There's a frivolity to them that you don't get if you try and paint them with a brush. Next petal. And I think what's happening for me is some of these have three petals and some have four. That's fine with me. You do realize too, when you do petals this way, there it's gonna take a little longer for your painting to dry. But 
that's okay. That's okay with me anyway. <laughs> a thick layer of paint takes a lot longer to dry than a thin layer of paint, which, you know, makes sense, right? All right, are there any of them that really want a fourth petal? This one wants a little fourth petal. This one does too. Kind of almost use the paint that's already on the flower, but there we go. Look, some of them almost look like butterflies, <laughs> which is great. Now, I'm going to do some coral ones. I realize this is not going to be a realistic painting, but I'm going to like it, and that's the important thing. Always make sure there's flowers going off the edge of your painting. One of the reasons I like to do um, time lapse or fast forward some of the um, portions of my paint of my tutorials is because um, I feel like you know it gets a little boring, and I I look up my YouTube stats and there's always people tuning out after a few minutes of silence or me chatting on about something so. It seems like people have short attention spans and it probably matters. You know, a lot of people that watch these tutorials probably aren't painting along. I know that sounds strange, but many people just watch art tutorials just to relax. And many times artists will watch tutorials not to paint along, but just to get ideas. I know because I do that a lot. Um, and I don't necessarily paint with very many of them actually but they're good just to watch to kind of get some ideas. Or if you're stuck on something and you want to look that up and you can just see how another artist does it. That's all good. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the pink ones which are a little bit dry and I'm just gonna put a little bit of coral, not much. So I'm basically just touching the pink ones a little bit of the coral color. And they're still a little bit wet and that's okay. You're just gonna, again, move the paint around a little bit. Again, I should be turning my canvas, but I'm, I'm just too tired. <laughs> if you wanna be more Better, a little bit better with the knife, you can turn the canvas like we have up till now. But since I'm just putting on little highlights, I'm not worrying about it 
as much. So some of these are really abstract, as you can see, and I am okay with that. with the and then I'm gonna put a little bit of this on some of the purple ones too. So even though we're putting all three colors on all flowers, they're all gonna look a little different because I didn't start with the same color on all of them. so good. So now there's coral on every one, every flower. Woohoo! So I'm all out of my pink, so I'm going to do purple next and then I'll have to mix a little bit of pink. So I'm going to put some purple on the coral ones. Coral ones, if you remember, don't have any other color but coral on them, so they're still kind of boring looking. Coral, a little purple for you, a little purple for you, and a little purple for you. Because all these colors are kind of in the same color family, even if you stroke too much and blend more than you want, it's still going to look nice. They're not going to blend to a muddy shade because they're all in the pinks, red and blue family. Okay, so now I want to get purple on the pink ones because I haven't done that yet. And I'm going to try and put the purple in a different spot not where I put the coral. I usually work with an easel, so it's actually uncomfortable for me to work on a table, but often with the filming, it works better. Put the camera above, because that way I'm not standing in front of my painting all the time. And I kind of waited to held the pink until the last for the highlights, because these flowers typically are mostly pink. 
So that way the pink will be predominant on all flowers. A little bit. If I was um, wanting another option, if I waited for this all to dry, I could use a brush to put some pink highlights and that actually might work. You'd get a little more control if one were to do that. But I'm not going to do that. Some of these flowers I like more than others and the ones I like more are the ones I didn't move the mite the knife as much, just kind of did a single stroke. They tend to look a little bit better. That's what happens when you're getting used to using a knife. This painting is a little fiddly because I'm doing three colors on each flower and then I'm going to do highlights as well after that. I've done all that. So it's a little bit, it's not a fast painting, but I don't think it's a hard painting. I hope you have fun with it. So they're really cool. We just need more white. So I might do the centers first though, and I'm going to do the centers in Payne's Gray with just a little bit of white added just to lighten it a titch. Okay, so I'm gonna use the wrong end of this brush. The reason I wanted to do it this way is because, <laughs> because my flowers are really goopy and wet. I need to have a way of getting a bead of paint down the center there without disturbing, taking off all the paint. And if I used a brush, it would kind of be a bit of a nightmare when it's this wet. So I'm literally really getting gobs of this and then barely touching. So if you push it down too hard, it won't work. You're just setting that little tiny bit of paint right in the center of each flower. but it's working really well. Doing tutorials with wet paint isn't always fun.
fussing with this is giving the flowers time to dry a little bit, which is wonderful. They do dry quicker than average. So that's just, just enough to, I'm gonna clean the end of my brush, just enough of a center just to make the flowers pop a little bit. That's cool. Okay, so I've got a little filbert. I guess you can't tell now because I've got paint on it. But it's a very small filbert, which is a rounded brush. Like this. I'm rounded on the end, but a lot smaller. So it's just a really small rounded edge brush. And I'm using my uh, iridescent white, pearlized white. You can just use regular. Now the important thing is like you want a lot of paint on that brush. This paint is a little bit transparent, but it's really showy. So it'll, I'm just kind of going in a rounded, and the filbert has a rounded edge, so it's perfect for this job. Just putting, now where the paint's wet, it's gonna move it a little bit. That's okay. We don't worry about these little things like that. Then if you get a lot of other color on there, then you have to wipe off your brush. But basically, you're just putting a little bit of white or fun, you know, you can use really, really light um, pink if you'd rather, but this just gives it some pizzazz. But yeah, wherever the paint is really thick, you, you could wait an hour. I'm just never patient enough, so I'm just putting some quick one stroke highlights. So the less you stroke for this step, the better. And I'm, I'm typically sticking sort of to the similar side of the petal, which is kind of the top. My painting, this is the top and this is the bottom. So I'm kind of putting it on the top edge of where there would be a petal. But because the paint's so wet and goopy underneath, I, you just really need a lot of paint on the brush and you need to use a very gentle, quick touch. Now you'll see me going over it more than I should, but really two, three, four. That's lots, you know. Yeah, and you're just giving your idea of highlight on the little on the petals. Your job isn't to make them look like a totally real. Your job is to make it look interesting and fascinating to the viewer not to make it photographic or perfect. If you're using white, you might want to use a little less, but it's all up to you. Any, any of the petals on the top will, of course, have more highlight than the bottom petals will have. So you've probably noticed that I'm doing a lot less on the bottom petals in general. But again, don't get too much in your head. Just make it pretty. In general, I'm liking that. 
It's got a subtlety and a classiness that I like. And at the end, we always sign our initials. I'm just going to put my L and my G. And there you have it. So I hope you really enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, I did want you to know that I'm typically an abstract artist, but I also do some realism. And I am launching a brand new course online. Um, I have a uh, free course that's free just for a limited time. And uh, you can find the link in the description below the video for that course. Uh, that's a short introduction to abstract. And if you take that and learn a little bit about my, my approach to abstract, you might be interested in taking a more long-term ongoing program that I'm designing that is also going to be online. And you for that program, it's called Take It to Art, uh, a little play on Take It to Heart. Um, and in that program, you will get a video lesson every week as well as a Zoom meeting every week to kind of discuss your progress and give you feedback and instructions and different things. Uh, also a community of other peers that are, you know, trying abstract, most of them probably for the very first time. And so it'll be a little community we can build together. So I hope you're interested in that and you can check that all out in the description. And my website is there that will have more details as they are available. So again, thanks very much. Welcome to spring and outdoor tutorials. I love it. And we will see you next week. Bye.